as La Quadrature du Net are a citizen organization. We, we defend uh, values such as the, the sharing of knowledge and the, the openness of the internet against uh, a vision based on control and enforcement. So um, the values we defend of a free internet in the last years have becoming more and more in conflict with the defense of copyright. So we are talking here of a copyright regime that barely changed since the 19th century and that is still based on uh, controlling the, the production and the distribution of copies. Well, the internet is a global tool for making copies. Every information you see online, every web page is copied all the way dozens of times on the network. So if you try to enforce a regime based on controlling copies with this machine, you're bound to break the machine. And breaking the machine means putting an end to the universality of the internet. If some country puts some filter, if some internet access provider puts some restriction or this and that. So we try to go to the policy makers and explain them that. And on the other hand, we go to the citizens and explain to them the internet is important. It's important for everyone. We own the internet together, not the, the telcos. So we love the internet, we work with the internet, we learn with the internet, so we have to do something about it. We, we, we document the legislative process, it is very important to us. We start when there is a, a proposition from the European Commission and explain why the proposition, for instance, is bad. Then it comes to the Parliament and we say that there will be amendments and we try to, to push the amendments and we, we explain how to do it. And then there is a vote in the, the committees and so on, and, and every step of the process, we explain this to the citizens so they can understand what is going on and participate in order to try to make things change. We, we worked a lot on ACTA in the, in the last uh, two or two and a half years. We even leaked uh, draft versions of the ACTA, we, we met with the negotiators and, and ma made lots of noise about it. Um, ACTA is interesting because every uh, country will have an occasion to either ratify it or not. So uh, countries that are not part of the EU but part of the ACTA have an occasion to have the, the parliament or the government to, to reject it. We have evidence that our citizen action from the outside puts pressure within a political process. And when the pressure is on, then we have a chance to put, push our ID through. So the work inside the parliament of documenting everything and writing the amendments is has to be done and you have to have organized people, you have to get some funding to do it and to, to be able to go to the parliament and so on. And this is one thing and it is, this is very important. That freedom of expression is threatened by uh, internet filters. Uh, I guess we all agree that it's threatened by uh, measures taken in the name of copyright and so on. And my point was why these questions of freedom of expression are so far away from the question of infrastructure. What may be broken is the very architecture of the internet, the decentralized architecture, where everyone can receive information but also send some. This is what is crucial. This is the universal infrastructure of the internet that is at stake. So, when we think infrastructure with a, I would say with a, with a geek's mind, but also with a, a industrial policy maker's mind, we know that free software is the key to autonomy, and to independence and to not rely on some Microsoft or Apple who can decide whatever goes through your computer.